we can't hear it. It's not. There we go. I can't hear it. Can you hear it, Ryan? Ryan can hear it. Ryan has it. I don't have it, but I'll I'll just air drum to it, even though I don't have it. <laughs> Welcome to the Top Contractor Podcast, the show that highlights the remarkable individuals who are shaping the construction industry and pushing its boundaries with engaging interviews, expert discussions, and re- real world stories of success. I'm Bill Ryman. You're Broker Builder here with my co-host. Nate Swank, what is up, Billy? Nate, what is up, brother? Another exciting week, another exciting episode here. This one's going to cap off the month, so uh, pretty pumped yes, about sir. this. And we're still talking building a positive company culture. But today, we got a guest coming on. We told you guys we were going to have guests, a powerful guest, impactful guest. No bozos, no no-shows. But before we get into it, Nate, what you got? What do we do here? All right, man. So the TCS podcast, we have three styles of episodes. One is a deep dive into a specific topic. Two is a interview with an expert. And we have an expert today. Damn. And he's good looking too, <laughs> folks. So you better be watching it on video. And number three is construction news. So... Let's get into it, man. You want to you want to give him the intro, or? Yeah, let's roll with this. Uh, we got a big time guest here with us. Excited to have this guy. Been a close friend of mine for a few years now. Uh, you know, him and I talk at least once a week, if not twice a week. Uh, this uh, guy is literally changing lives with his company, doing some big things. And I thought he was the perfect Nate, and I thought he was the perfect person to talk company culture because what he's done with his company bsi paving is unbelievable so ryan austin welcome to the top contractor podcast brother what's up guys uh it's exciting to be here um especially with uh you know being as good of friends as we are um it's nice just to have a conversation about what's going on and and uh it should be uh should be a fun uh 45 minutes to an hour yeah, man. We're excited to have you. We're excited to talk on this topic, too. Before we get started, though, let's hear a little bit about you for the audience that doesn't know you. A lot of the audience does know you. But for those that don't, who is Ryan Austin? Well, you know, it's pretty simple. Uh, Ryan Austin uh, is a, a uh, man of God, uh, a uh, husband to uh, my high school sweetheart, uh, which we've been together since 1997. So if you can put that map together, it's been uh, 27 years. Um, and it's uh, one of those things that I have four amazing kids. Um, I have a 16-year-old uh, named Abby, a uh, 14-year-old Sienna, uh, and a 12-year-old Gavin. And, uh, you know, I just uh, decided that I love kids so much that I'm going to have a, another one. So we had a uh, three-year-old named Summer Hope. And, uh, you know, during COVID, it was uh, definitely the summer of hope. So we really just, uh, we couldn't do it without her. And I think that that's really one of those things that who I am today is, is, is my kids changed my life. Mm. Love it. So that's, that's, a, that's in a nutshell who Ryan is. Uh, Ryan is somebody that loves to give back, uh, pour into people and just, just try to impact one person every single day. And I think that's my mission. Uh, but you know, it's, uh, it's getting to, to the, be the point where, you know, now my kids are making an impact. And so that's, that's really what fatherhood is. And, you know, being a husband and being able to be there for your kids and your wife is, is a huge thing for me. Get into that a little bit. Um, before we get into your business, what you do there, you said impact to one person every day. How are you going about that? What are you doing with that? You know what? It starts, it starts really easy. Um, it, you know, I wake up, um, you know, really early. My wife thinks I'm crazy. Um, but I, I wake up right around four o'clock every morning, uh, regardless of what time I go to bed. Uh, and I do it because I do it with intention. Um, I didn't used to do it. Um, but I have a routine and the routine is first and foremost, I, uh, I, I really just get down and pray to God, um, every single morning and, and really just, uh, get in the word because things come to you when it's nice and quiet and your, your mind's open. And, you know, so I have this morning routine and, and to be honest with you, it's literally calmed down my life. And I say that because, you know, before I used to try to do things on my own 
And I started really just leaning on, you know, the word and God and just really trying to get into that. And I think that that's what's changed my life so much in the, in the past is just being intentional with what I do every single day. Because before I was going through life just as a normal thing, because we were running a company, we were making good money, but it was just normal. It was day to day stuff. So now that I'm more intentional, things are starting to come to me. And when I mean, what I mean by that is, is I have more time to impact people. And so when I do the things in the morning, I'm really just, you know, turning my wheels and just, I, I send texts out uh, to people every single day that I'm thinking about in the morning. There's mornings where I, I'm thinking about people and it comes into my head and then I immediately have somebody call me. So like, it's, it's crazy, the intuition and the things that are happening in my life, but you know, being on this podcast, you know, I mean, all I got to do is just impact one person. So if I can give some knowledge, I can give some wisdom just to one person. That's all I care about. A lot of people are trying to impact the world and that's, that's a hard thing to do. Okay. But if you just impact one person, that's a ripple effect and that can go out there and, and really just make a huge difference in the world because, you know, uh, just by just asking your kids how they're doing, listening to them in the morning, you're impacting your kids on a daily basis because if you, if this is what a lot of people don't realize every single day, Okay, if you're yelling at your kids before they go to bed or if you're yelling at them in the morning, what do they, what do they do? They have a bad night's sleep or if they wake up, they go to school in a bad mood. It's those intentions that you have to send them off. So a good thing that I do is I get to take my son to school every day. And when I when I make sure that he leaves, he goes, Dad, I love you. And I said, I love you too. go out and impact one person today. Hmm. And that's that's just me saying that. And my kid's like, yeah, dad, yep, I'll do it. And that's training and, and doing the things that, that I like to do. And then he's going out there and things are being caught by him and things are being caught by my kids. And I think that that's really the impact. So not only am I impacting people out in the world, maybe one person, I'm impacting my kids on a daily basis. I love it, man. I love it. One, one thing that, I, and I don't want it to get off topic, but <clears throat> so I pray and read in the morning as well. And the biggest thing that I struggle with, and probably most business owners, entrepreneurs who do that in the faith struggle with is like your mind. And I'm trying to pray, I'm trying to read. And then my mind's going, oh, wait, what about this thing I got to do? What do I, what about this? And Bill's shaking his head right now. He's like, yeah. So I'm just like, and then I'll, I'll pray. I'll stop reading. I'll be like, all right, God, please steady my mind. May help me focus on this. Help me focus on this. But man, that is, it is hard to do. Even early in the morning, man, I'll do it at like five in the morning, sometimes 430 in the morning. Not often 430. I'm not too much of an early guy, but, you know, and it's just too hard to get not too hard, but it's difficult. So do you deal with that? And then how do you combat that? So so some mornings I do. Um, I think that what we do as, as as normal human beings in this world is we go right to our phone. So when we go right to our phone, our phone, it tricks our head to like go and see what's going on. Mm -hmm. So then our immediately mind is chasing or literally what we're doing and how we go, what we got to do for the day and this and that. So what I do is I'm more and more intentional with that is, is like, I tell people this story and I've told it a million times. If you're having a hard time praying, put your phone underneath the bed and set your alarm. So when you, when you hear that alarm, you have to get down on your knees before you do that kind of thing. So like what I mean by that is, is you have to hit your phone. You keep your phone away from you. Don't look at it. Don't touch it, but go right into to really just a quiet time with him. And if you can do that, what happens is, is it takes it away from all that struggle that you're looking at. And a lot of thing is too, is, is I read before I go to bed. So like when I read before I go to bed, I'm thinking about those kind of things. So if I'm reading the Bible or if I'm reading my devotional, or if I'm reading a book, that's more intentional. So my mind at night is actually thinking about that stuff. It's not thinking about stuff that I'm going to do the next morning. So I have a pretty good routine, but a lot of people, they're so consumed with their phone that they immediately go to their phone and they start surfing. That's what triggers your mind to go into this state of what do I got to do? I got to do this. Oh, well, this person's doing that. I got to do this. Just be more intentional with your quiet time is because at four o'clock in the morning, you're so groggy when you get up. I mean, most people are at that, that early that you wake up and you're just kind of like your brain's not thinking. That's when you immediately go into the word and that takes you into a quiet time, a peaceful time. And it took me a long time to do that. But, 
it's just being repetitious. And I'll tell you right now that that that's one thing that's really helped me to do that is just, is just be consistent. I love that answer. I just want to touch on that a little bit too, because I struggle like Nate with that. That's why I was nodding my head because it, it's, you know, I get distracted. Like I was walking this morning and as I was walking, I was praying, but then somebody would walk by me, I'd wave. And then I'd start thinking about something else or, you know, I'd see something and I'd start thinking about the day at work and this and that, and I'm not even having my phone. Usually I play like meditation music while I'm walking so I can try and visualize and stuff like that too. But one thing, and I learned this from a guy we actually built the house for. He's an entrepreneur guy, uh, very successful in the uh, liquor industry, but um, what he actually does, and I had lunch with him a couple weeks ago, and he was telling me that every single day he has this prayer in his phone and he reads his prayer, but he adds to it. So it's almost like a never ending prayer and it keeps his focus because, he, you know, and he kind of keeps his phone on do not disturb. This is what he does in the morning. And he reads this prayer every day, but it's always changing. So that kind of keeps him focused on um you know the prayer and what he what he needs to say for that day he starts out by thanking god and being grateful then he goes into you know his blessings and all these different things so i started writing a prayer on my phone too and i'm still working on it and adding to it but i've noticed that as i'm writing i've become focused on it because that's just how i am i focus on the work that i'm doing nate you're probably the same way mm. so it's, it's a good it's, idea yeah, it's just something to kind of add to what Ryan said. And I've been doing that because I get so distracted and it's not even by my phone. It's just by what's around me. And then I'll start thinking about what I have coming for the day. And then somebody, you know, it's just like somebody else, my wife might say something or so, you know, it's just you're constantly all over the place. But that was pretty cool that he showed me that, too, just to touch on that. Yeah. And I, and I think too, like I've told you what I do is like, I, I like read my devotionals, I read the Bible, but then I put my phone in front of me and I videotape anywhere from two to 10 minutes of a conversation just between me and the phone. I don't post it. I don't do anything. I don't, you know, say anything. I just, I have an archive of videos because I want to, I want to really just really track my journey where I'm going. And the thing is, is if I look back at those videos, I think I've sent you one in the past is like, I'm really intentional on what I'm doing. And so like when you're so intentional on something, nothing, nothing comes in your way. Like you, your focus, that's your time. And you have that block and it really just focuses you and you can really learn a lot. So what I do is I read, I write, and then I video every single day. And that's just something that I do. And I've made time for that. And it's made a huge impact and it's helped me retain stuff, but it's also helped me really dive into who I am, not only as a, as a human and as a person, but as a father and a, and a, you know, as a husband too, because it's more, I'm doing things for purpose. I'm not doing things just for me. I'm doing things for purpose. So like, I'm trying to really just dive into that and really learn it because right now I am so engulfed in it, in my faith that I'm 100% committed, you know, and before I was always 50%. So it made me distracted because I was like, well, I, I don't know about this thing, you know, so I would go halfway and then I'd read a little bit and then I'd get distracted. But when you really truly go 100% and you're consistent, things start to happen. You, you block out all the noise. It's almost like people like for me, like when I read, I'll put, I'll put music on and I can read and retain the, the word way better by just listening to music in the background. So it just blocks out everything because this brain and your brain and everybody's brain is constantly moving at hundred miles an hour. So you have to really tweak just things on how you do things. But dude, I, I, I'm, I'm truly one of those consistent people. And I used to not be, you know, I was very, very, uh, non-structured, very, uh, just, ah, well, whatever today is, today I'll be, you know, and, and, and I, when I started being more intentional, start, things started happening in my life. Love it, man. Let's talk about your business a little bit and let's go back, kind of keep the topic the way it's going. Cause I love this discussion and, uh, how has, you know, faith, you know, your faith and building BSI, how have those come together over the time? Obviously, 
you know, you you started BSI, talk about that a little bit and then how much it's grown and how much the company has grown and, you know, the topics more on the culture and everything, but this is all relevant to how you've built the culture too. So, uh, talk about your faith in business a little bit and how that's combined with each other to make it where it is today. Yeah. So this is, this is, this, I owe this to everything. So six years ago, um, a lot of you, I mean, you guys know, but a lot of people know that like, um, I would go to work, um, you know, this was like, this was before six years ago, but it's been a little over six years, but before six and a half years ago, I would, I would just go through life and, you know, I would, I would, I would have a successful business. I would have some cocktails and go to happy hour. And cause I thought that was what business was is like sales is this and sales is that. But what I started realizing is I wasn't being myself. You know, you know how you like start to act the part and you start to say, you know, like, well, I don't know who I'm going to be today, you know, because you, you have this alter ego thing where you're like, well, I'm I'm the owner of BSI, you know, and I used to say, well, I'm the owner of BSI. Woohoo. Look at me. I'm the owner of BSI. Well, meanwhile, that's not what I was about. I was masking who I was in an identity that was not working. And what I mean by that is, is I was literally living life. And I was very disappointed. I wasn't happy. I had great kids, great wife, but I wasn't happy where I was today. And what I mean by that is, is I didn't know who I was. So when I said, you know what, I got to stop doing things for myself and start having God do things. That's when my whole life shifted. And what I mean by that is, is, is November 17th of 17, I took my last drink and that was probably the most pivotal moment in my life because what happened was that night I drank so much that I didn't want to ever drink again. And I just said, you know, one thing is like, God, if I can get through this, I'll never have a drink again. And I'll tell you right now, God was there for me. God was there waiting for me to say that because I was at my wits end. When people say that they're at the rock bottom, I was pretty close to almost the, below my rock bottom. I was 350 something pounds. I could barely tie my shoe and that lifestyle was not sustainable. I was on the verge of losing my wife, losing my kids, working all the time. It was a disaster. And so what I did was is I started putting faith in my life and I was dabbling a little bit here and there. And that's what people do. And then that's kind of the start of it. That's the kind of you lean in a little bit, you go to church, you come back and they're like, yeah, I feel great. And then you would disappear from it. And then you come back into it and disappear again. And so what, what happened was, is this is the, the real pivot moment, is when I said, I can't do this by myself, I need help. And I started praying to God. He told me, he's like, you don't believe enough in me. You need to go further. And, and, and I, I'm like, what do you mean? And I was getting these things like, I, I, would, I would literally have a couple days where everything was great. And then I'd go back to my old habits and I go, boom, and I get knocked in the head and I would get you know, just destroyed with either work or something would be, you know, distract me. It was one of those things that I felt like I kept getting hit and I'm like, why is this happening to me? And so I started praying and I, and, and, and I started praying and saying, what do you need from me? What do you need? And I just kept getting this, this thing. It's like, put your trust in me, put your trust in me. And so three years ago, I took that jump. I took that jump where I, I, God was like, you need to do this. And I'm like, what do you, you want me to do this? You want me to start a father's group and, and for, to be a better husband, a better father, and, and, and really just pour into you. You want me to start this up? Who's going to be in this group? And he just started putting people in my life. And when I, when I started doing that, my company culture started to shift. Because what I was doing is, is I was doing life with him. And what happened was, is everybody around me started to notice. And that's where the culture started to shift. And what I mean by that is, is my emotions started changing. My reactions started changing. My demeanor started changing, meaning I was pouring into people. I was becoming a servant leader. And I was a leader before and I was helping people, but I wasn't a servant leader. I was always like, what's in it for me? What's this? What's that? If I do this, what am I going to get? And a lot of people think that way that nowadays, but when you start saying, you know, it's not about me, it's bigger than me. That's when life starts to shift. 
-hmm. in your company. The thing is, is you're going to really know what your culture is all about when you start doing that and bringing that into your company. I didn't, I didn't pray. I didn't preach at my people. I would come in my office. I'd leave the door open and I would pray and people would walk by. They would see what I was doing. Ooh, what's different about him? Why is he so different? And people started asking questions. Well, here's the thing. When you have somebody that's not made to be in your company and you're doing those kind of things, guess what happens? They leave and you think, oh my gosh, they left. But then guess what happens? God sends you somebody else in that place that's 10,000 times better. And then when that person comes in your life, I met with my head sales person right now is probably one of the best human beings. What I mean that is, is like he came into my life. I met him on social media and we met for eight weeks. I, I want to say eight weeks and we never even talked about work. He had a CrossFit gym that he was running, but doing some coaching. And we just talked for eight weeks. We just talked about, you know, life, family, what we were doing, how we were doing it. And we met for eight months straight. And all of a sudden I was complaining about, man, I don't know what to do. I'm, 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 I'm in a, I'm in a pinch right now. I don't have salespeople. I have two salespeople that they're not salespeople. I don't want these people in my company because I felt like it wasn't the right fit for our company. And that means you have to have core values. So we live and die by our core values. So when we had the core values, they weren't doing the core value thing. So I'm like, well, if they're here and they're not being a part of the core values, why am I keeping them around? So I started making hard decisions. I started letting people go. I started like literally praying and saying, how do I do this? And what I was, I didn't have to like let people go. God was pushing them out of my company literally by the day. And I'm like, oh my gosh, what's going to happen? But then guess what? Knock on the door, or phone call. Hey, I'm looking for a job. I heard this, blah, blah, blah. I heard your company's doing really well. And you're, you know, this, and I've had people come to me where they said, my, my son worked for you and he saw you praying. And now I heard that. And now he's, he's referring people to me. And so like, that's the kind of stuff that you do. And it starts growing. And so the culture almost just started shifting. And, and the best thing about it is, is when you become a servant leader in your company and you put others first, that's when you start getting good people. That's when you start getting the people in your company and they're like, man, this guy, is, this guy will do anything for us. And you got to realize that there's going to be people in your life that come into your life for a reason, a season, and a lifetime. And I look at those people as like those seasoned people that come into my life that's to make me better. That's God putting those people in my life to make mm. sure that I stay on track. They give me hard times sometimes, but I stay focused and then I move on. And so here's the thing. And this is the, this is probably the most pivotal thing that you're, if you have multiple employees, you have to be the person, the light in the room for those people. You have to be the vision. You have to be the leader. You have to serve into them. You have to take their talents that they have and you have to bring them out. Not focus on the, the, the stuff that they're not good at, but really focus and be intentional on the things that they're great at and pull those out of them. Pull those great things out of them. And that's what I feel I'm really good at. And that's why our culture is, is shifting the way it is. So if you think, well, I'm not good at that. I don't know if I can do that. Well, guess what? Just ask yourself the question. I wasn't good at those things six years ago either. It's taking those things and really just being intentional with them and running the play is what we call it here at BSI. We run the play every day. I have people out in my office right now that are literally collaborating on things to do, and I don't even have to initiate it. I walk out there and I see them talking. I see them excited. I see them putting new processes together, putting new things together, talking about bids, helping each other. The culture that I had before when I was I call it cloudiness when I was clouding my brain with alcohol and everything else is I had a culture where, where people didn't collab. People were mean. People were, it was a scarcity mentality. When you did something good, that person wouldn't like it. They wouldn't cheer you on. So now we've become a big cheering section for our people and being servant to everybody. It's not just about me being servant. It's everybody being servant. So that's, that's really in a nutshell, like how the culture has shifted because I was more intentional and I really just focused on what God was doing and not what I wanted to do. 
And when you do that, it's an amazing because things keep happening. I mean, every single day, man, I can't even explain it. The Holy Spirit nudges me on a constant basis and tells me, hey, do this, do this, go do this, call this person. They need you. And I literally call them and they're like, I was just thinking about you. I need this call. I've done it, I think, with you, Bill. Mm -hmm. Like, I've literally called you in a certain circumstance that I didn't realize that I even knew what I was doing. I've called somebody and I've had a conversation. And you said, whoa, dude, I was just talking about this with my wife. Mm -hmm. Thank you for telling me this. That's how crazy the Holy Spirit moves you. Mm. Man, this is pretty dang good. (laughs) Oh, dude, I'm taking, I'm getting all emotional I'm right taking now, notes. Like, I usually don't take notes when we have an interview, man, because they just like they hit surface or maybe a little bit. But man, Ryan, this is great. Um, one thing I want to make sure that the audience caught on that is like people are in your life for a reason, a season and a lifetime. And looking at that with your employees, because there, there's nothing wrong with having somebody on your team who's only there for a season. Sometimes you need those people. And I think that's a a mental block that some of us entrepreneurs have. It's like, oh, no, we got to always have that person for a lifetime. No, it's so I love it, man. Dude, I I just I just had I just had somebody leave on Friday and last Friday and I, I hired him and I thought I thought he would be be great. But what he what what you don't realize is that person came in for just a little bit in my life to make me stronger on how to do things the next time. And so like, you've got to understand is, is like, I'm not going to be perfect. I'm going to make mistakes. In fact, so much that I had to apologize to my whole team for making that mistake because I thought that this person was good, but we went off the protocol. We didn't do things the proper way. We have a protocol of how we hire. And I thought, you know what? I feel good about this. I'm going to hire this. And I went through all the wrong chains and all the wrong processes. And guess what happened? It made me stronger because now I realize what I did. And I went back to my people and I said, man, I apologize. I screwed up. This is on me. It's on nobody else but me. And it's being humbled to be able to let your people know when you screw up. Because what happens is, is they come to you and they say, man, I screwed up. And you can love on them because if they love on you and you love on them, everything is fine. It's people make mistakes. Every single person in this world, if they say they don't make mistakes, they're lying. I make mistakes every single day. And I'll tell you right now, when I say I'm going to do something, I do it to my staff. And, and that's the biggest thing is this like if you're going to, you know, preach things, you're going to say things and you're going to not do them. That's a culture killer in itself. So you have to do everything. So guess what? When I work on things, I tell it to everybody. You know why? Because it holds me accountable. Because if I say it, I'm not going to do it. So like if I if I say like, for instance, back in October, I ran a marathon. I've never ran before more than three miles in my life. But guess what? I told everybody I was going to do it. I had 19 weeks to train. And guess what I did? I finished that marathon. It almost killed me, but I finished it in that last four miles. All I could think about is I said it, I need to finish. I don't care what it does, what it takes. And I prayed. And if I wouldn't have had my team, and what I mean by that is Jeremy was there running it with me and I had my controller and, and, and I'm going to tell you this story real quick. My controller is a runner. Okay. And she's run a ton of half marathons and her husband runs triathlons and all these other things. I mean, he's run hundreds of miles and, and, uh, he told her, he told her, he goes, you've ran all the races you could run on a half marathon. Your boss needs you to do the last 13.1 miles. And I said, dude, you run the marathon, you do whatever you want. He's like, nope, she is going to run with you because you're going to need her. That last four miles, she was screaming at me, yelling at me, saying, you're not going to stop. You're going. And she was literally there for me. And I say this because that's culture. That's somebody taking, being a servant leader and taking something that they could have just ran the race and done their own thing. 
But no, she was there right by my side. She told me what to do. She coached me through the last four miles because I was cramping up to where I could barely even move, but I just kept going. And once I kept going, my mind with her saying this and, and, and me praying and, and me just saying, I said, I'm going to do this. I'm not stopping. I finished it. And that's, that's a true person that's under God is like, you say you're going to do it, you're going to do it. And so that's one of those things that like, I'm not perfect, but when I say I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it. So I'm very careful what I say around my team, my family, my kids, because things are caught, not taught. So if you're telling your kids to do something and you're not doing it, guess what's going to happen? You're a hypocrite. And I, and, and this is going to be very bold for people out there that are listening. If you're doing that, you're a hypocrite. Look in the mirror, tell yourself that you're lying to yourself and start being a man, start being a husband, start being the father that you should be and just do it because there's no excuses in life. If you say you're going to do it, do it. And I, and I truly believe that. And I was the guy seven, eight years ago that told people I was going to do something and I shortcut everything. And that's why my life was where I was at. So when people like back to the story of this person that came into my company, you have to own your crap and you have to let people know when you screw up because you are human, you are going to screw up, but that makes the culture go so much better. And if the culture continuously, I mean, I, I tell people, it's like, dude, when you get to this point, when you have 40 to 50 employees in your culture, you have to be very careful. You have to be intentional on in what you're doing. You have to constantly work on it. I spend 20 hours a week on culture and you know why it's because that's how important it is to me and my, my, you know, our company here, that's how important it is to the growth of our people here. And that's the life. That's the purpose here. The purpose is to grow individuals and be a servant leader. So they are better than themselves. They seek out the things that they don't know how to do and they become experts at it and they, they shine. I have people here that started that were in jail 12 years ago. On a, on a road to destruction, losing their kids, divorced, drugs, alcohol, getting out of prison, relapsing and coming back. And we as a team here have put these people through rehab and focused and really prayed and really did things. And we've got them now where they're actually leaders in my company and they're top tiers and they've been clean nine to 10 years. And that's what I do. That's what I, that's, that's why I do it is developing servant leaders underneath you and creating those leaders, empowering those people to be who they should be through the eyes of God. Unbelievable. I mean, this, <laughs> I'm just like, Nate, this is amazing. You guys listen to this. You guys are going to have to replay this whole thing over and over and over, man. Cause I know I'm going to listen to it again. A hundred percent. I make, I'm taking notes just like Nate. Um, it's just, just the, what you said on your employees and hiring too, because we've all been there. We've all forced hired because we needed a position. We just needed to fill it. And it wasn't us. It wasn't the right fit. It wasn't us listening to God. It wasn't us, you know, praying about it and doing the things that we should. And it's crazy what you said, because I just, we just had that happen with a laborer. You and I have talked about this and I've talked with this about Nate to Nate too, but it's, um, you know, it's crazy how things happen and how God works. You know, we force hired a labor. The guy wasn't very good. We kind of kept him around and gave him a couple chances. And he was sitting in his car. He just wasn't doing a good job. He was taking, you know, he was slow. And all of a sudden we get this phone call uh, from this other kid, 18 year old kid, looked up our company, loved our values, looked at, you know, loved it. It was a family business, really looking for somewhere to go and grow with, worked at a big corporation uh, prior and was just wanted something more, you know, wanted to be a part of something. So we you know, my gut said, bring them in. We, we had the labor we did, but my gut was like, you know what? I got to bring this kid in. He called, he made the effort and I brought him in, had the conversation. Very good kid. Yes, sir. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. This, you know, and it's been awesome. We hired him on the spot and, uh, you know, I ended up getting rid of the other guy and it, it just, this, this dude's been amazing and it's crazy how everything works and they get put in your path. You know, like I've told you about Mason came from first form, uh, met him at the gym cause I was wearing a first form shirt and then him and I struck conversation 
for quite a few weeks and then he reached out to me and was like hey man you got you guys hiring just let me know i'd be happy to have an opportunity with you and hired him and he's freaking been the fastest moving employee ever in our company he's where he's managing three i i actually he's managing four jobs i put four houses with him yesterday and he's ready to take it and run so it's just it's crazy how it all works listening to what you said when you just are open-minded to because people always say and nate knows this too they're always like oh I, how do you guys hire i can't i can't find anybody we see it in tcs you know we see it in top contract school i can't find anybody the job market sucks nobody wants to work you always hear those things but it's like if you think that way too why is God going to give you anybody good? Why you're thinking negative. You're, you're, you're like, I can't find anybody who's going to be like, all right, you don't want to come to me. Why should I give you somebody good? Why should, why should I help? Right. So it's just, it's crazy. All the stuff. It, I love what you said, man. That's, it's awesome. Well, the thing is, is like, remember how I said that, like when somebody leaves, somebody else comes in my life. That's how my MO has been since I've been in my faith. And, and what I mean by that is, is I feel it like peace. It's like peace, you know, like, like you, you somebody leaves and you're like, man, I know somebody's going to walk through that door. That's so much better. And I know that, you know, and, and we talk about this all the time. It's like when you have a good employee and you know, he's good, you want to pour into that guy. You want to make sure he has the right tools. You want to make sure that, he, you know, what does he, where does he want to go? Like, how would, how does he want to be coached? How does he want to, you know, how does he want to take his kids? What's his purpose? Like, does he want to take his kids on a vacation? Cause I've had conversations with employees where they like, I want to take my, you know, fam, my whole family at the end of the year to Disney world. Well, that same employee misses two days the following week. How, do, how does that work? Okay. So then you can really take that and say, man, remember that you remember the talk that we had, Remember you said you were going to take your family to, you know, Disney World. That's pretty expensive. And 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 I know we talked about this, but you know, if you're not going to you're if you're not going to show up, how are you going to how are you going to do that? How are you going to how are you going to take your kids to Disney World? And so you start to reprogram their mind of what's really important because what really was important in that moment was them just screwing off. And we've all done it. I've done it. You guys have done it. We've all taken days off. But here's the thing. When you have true purpose in your life of who you really want to be, there's no stopping you. It's like that's what the culture is here. It's like there, when one person leaves, we all get together and we all say, hey, no big deal. We're going to go as planned. We're going to do this, this, and this. And then all of a sudden somebody walks in the door and they're like, oh, my God, look at this person. They just walked in the door. They have this, 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 this. And then we slow down. We take it through the process and we do the same thing. And, and I say this because every person that says they can't find employees is not running the play or doing the process because we've been doing this three years and people are coming into my company, our company here, and they're literally seeing what's going on. They don't have to be here long to see what's going on. They can walk through the door and notice a totally different thing. I want to tell you a story. I hired a sales guy last year. He is from another company, was amazing. Like, and, I mean, he was selling $14 million at this company, one of my competitors. In fact, one, it was a competitor that I respect in the industry. And I said, perfect. Well, guess what? The first two weeks, he came to me. He said, hey, can I tell you a story? And I said, sure. He goes, hey, I want to I wanna tell you what my son said. I said, yeah, sure. So his son came to him. He goes, daddy, can I, can you tell your boss something? And he's like, yeah, sure, buddy. And I'll tell him anything. He's like, can you tell your, can you tell your boss? Thank you for my new daddy. That is the culture shift mm -hmm. from where you came from to where you are now. I get teary eyed about this because that's how good things are here. And, and, and in a culture, you can't just say, I can't find anybody. I can't do this because that's when God's going to say, well, guess what? You can't find anybody. I'm not going to send anybody your way because you're making excuses for what you're doing. You're not being consistent. You're not running the play. You're not being a servant leader. You're not putting your faith in me. And I, I had somebody tell this to me a long time ago. You just don't believe in God enough. That's why things are happening to you. 
Mm. And I, that just smacked me. That smacked me over the head with almost like a two by four. It was like, you're right. I don't, I'm not leaning in. I'm not abiding by him first. I'm doing things my own way. So when I leaned in and did things, dude, I'm not scared of anything anymore. My calmness and my, 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 the way I run around here in my, in my company is completely different than most asphalt, most concrete guys in the world right now, because nothing will phase me. You know what the stuff that phases me? I'm the most loyal person. Okay. And that's the hardest part. That's my trigger is I'm very loyal. I'll do anything for anybody. So when somebody breaks that loyalty, that, that hurts me. It, it doesn't affect me. It hurts me. So those are the things that I'm working on. That's the, cons- that's the consistency of me doing things. But guess what? I know it. I know the triggers. I know what has to happen. And I'm very calm. And when that starts to happen, I start praying. I start doing things because I don't want to veer off into that situation. And I'm just telling you guys little things that, that I do. But that culture shift is completely different. So when people say, well, you know, I'm struggling with my culture. I'm, well, what are you doing? You can't just meet with people in your company and expect the culture to change. You have to change you first. You have to be you, the person that you are truly made through God's eyes. And then when that happens, guess what happens? Your company starts shifting. It starts changing. People start coming to your life. I had a controller a couple of years ago here. Great person. Awesome. Just wasn't where we wanted to go. And then guess what? Three weeks later, a new controller comes in. Literally the most amazing person, the person that got me through my marathon. Those are things that God's putting in my life. And he's like, hey, I'm going to put these people in for a season. I'm going to put these people in for a lifetime. These people in the season are going to are going to really challenge you and grow you. And then the people that are in for a lifetime, I'm going to send you those gifts because you got through the people that are in there for the season. And I don't like to throw anybody away. I don't ever give up on people. But people give up on their self first. And so what I say this is, is like, I have a lot of good people that have left here because they couldn't handle where we were going. And that's not, that's not on me. As long as I'm right with who I am, and I talked about this with Jeremy this morning, my head of sales, as long as you are okay and you have nothing to hide, and you, you're good with your life, you can go through life easily. It's almost a source of freedom and peace. So like if I'm doing things and I'm saying things and I'm 100% confident in what I'm saying, nothing can ever destroy me. Mm. Speechless. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, it's, 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 it's truly, I mean, like I, I challenge you guys to come out in Michigan and, and just really just walk through those doors yeah. because I challenge anybody that's listening. I, I mean, I challenge anybody to, to research me, to ask my employees to, you know what, the best thing you can do, if you really want to know somebody, if you really, truly want to know somebody, ask their wife what kind of person they are. That is who is going to tell you who that person is. And that's how confident I am of who I am. Mm. Because I know that my wife is going to do exactly the things that I do. And she's going to say, yeah, seven years ago, he was this. But the last six years, completely transformed, completely. He was great before, but now he's the true father, true husband, and and just an amazing human being. And that's the key because you can look at that wife and say, you can, you can literally say, see if she's lying. And then you can also go a step even farther, ask their kids, Hey, what is your, what is your dad? You know, how does your dad treat your mom? How does your dad treat you? What does he do? Does he comfort you? Does he listen to you? Does he cuddle with you? Does he understand what you're going through? Mm -hmm. Those are things that will change the directory of that human. So you can't fake it. If you can fake it, you're going to go down this road of just, you won't know who you are. And I was there at one time and it's miserable. It's almost at the point where you don't even want to live because you're completely, it's exhausting to be somebody you're not. And so when I stepped out of who I should be, 
it was almost the most easy thing in the world. It's like God was just putting people in my life. And I go back and I say this, this is like three, you know, three years ago when I started this men's group, God put the right people in my life to make me consistent. And what I mean by that is, is being a servant leader, making sure you show up every single day. It's not about you. It's about others. You show up every single day because you don't know what that person's going through. And so for me being consistent with this, with this group has changed completely my life. It's completely changed other people's life. I can honestly tell you this group, there's nothing out there in the world like it. And I challenge people to even see it Mm -hmm. because it's an amazing group. And it's the reason why is because we are truly men doing fellowship together, telling, being very vulnerable with each other and being servant leaders to each other. And that's the key in life. I want to, I want to talk a little more about what you, what you what you just said, actually, you said it's, you know, cause you, you talk, you've been saying this too. And I think a lot of businesses struggle with it. And you said, it's not about me. The business isn't about me. You know, it's about being a servant leader. And I think a lot of companies struggle with it, with that because they make it about them. They make business about them. They make the company about them. And they're just hung up on that. They're constantly spinning on, you know, we need to do this. They're, they're more barking out the orders, more micromanagement, more, um, and our company used to be that way too. I mean, it was more of an old school approach. Uh, my dad, obviously that's how they were. Uh, and I've completely shifted it and changed it to make it more about the employees, uh, giving them a little more leverage to do the things that they need to do to get the job done too. But the culture is tight too. We've built a really tight culture where we all enjoy being around each other, hanging out, like, you know, and it's, it's not just about business. Like yesterday, one of my employees, uh, she had to take the day off because her son was having surgery. Well, I called her in the morning, uh, because she told me what time the surgery was. First thing I said to her, it wasn't about work. It was, how's your son, how's the little man doing? And that meant the world to her, man. She was like, wow, thank you so much. Like, ah, he's doing good, this and that. I was like, well, that's the most important thing. Uh, Also, I wanted to follow up on this. And after we were done talking, she was like, yeah, thanks for checking in. That meant a lot. So just talk more about to, and I mean, we you know, due to time and stuff, we'll, we'll have to do a part two, obviously. Uh, But, uh, I want to hear more about that because a lot of businesses struggle with that. It, they make it more about them rather than their employees. So talk about that. I'm going to, I'm going to give, so I'm going to give a huge bomb right now. And, and I hope people are taking notes. It's like you have an ego. Okay. But business owners that do that, their ego is just edging God out. And that's the, that's the God's honest truth. Because if you, if you edge God out, nothing's ever going to be successful in your life. And so I say this because when I was a high ego person and it was all about me, I was getting the same people in my company. Mm. And what happened was, is we were literally going maybe two steps forward and 10 steps back. So that's a killer in this society with businesses. If your ego is so big and you can't get out of the way of it, that's why I always say, I'm just a speck on the wall. Like I don't like, there's a lot of things bigger than me. Okay. A lot, but God is the true main focal point. And when I say this is like, they don't, a lot of ego businesses, they don't fear God because they care about money. That's all they care about. And we have a core value system here at BSI that it's all about family. It's all about integrity. It's all about culture. It's all about being a servant leader. Okay. How can you be a servant leader when you're saying I, 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 like most business owners, you see a lot of this online, this imposter syndrome. I talked about a little bit about it today. Imposter syndrome is just your ego. It's just your ego saying, yeah, I can do this or I can't do this. Okay. But when you put your faith in God, you can do anything. God says you can do anything. You can do anything through his eyes. So there's no stopping as long as you put him first. But when people have an ego and they don't fear God, that's when they're dangerous. 
That's when they will step on and kill anything in front of them. And that's why businesses are destroyed overnight. And so you got to understand if you work for a company or if you're in an asphalt company, that that's all it's about. Maybe you just need to pick up the phone and you need to say, man, I need to call BSI. Maybe I can move to Michigan because here's the thing is, is that's what's happening. We are getting people moving here. We're getting people that are driving an hour and a half away, and now they're moving closer. We're getting people that are referring their brothers, their cousins that are in good careers, but they feel like they have to be a part of this. It's being part of something bigger than yourself is what drives people in this world. And that's the presence of God. So if God's in this room and God's in this company, there's no stopping us. We will win every single day because we are servant leaders, because we're helping. And guess what? The best thing about that is your customers see everything. They see how the people out in the field, I have guys that have literally, I have pictures of them. I could prove it. I I was on a job. I had one of my foremans helping and holding the old lady's hand across the whole thing. And I didn't say anything. Tell me how many companies will do that. Ah, They don't care. They're they're working. They're not going to go help that person. We stop what we're doing and we become that servant leader. We become that person that people don't know. So when people talk about us, they don't say bad things. They say, man, that company's got their stuff together. Man, I wish I worked for that company. Man, I can't believe that company where they've come the last six years. It's not about you. So when you become that, your company will go down. So I always say, nobody is bigger than you. So you've got him in God, man. God is the biggest person alive, man. He tells you. He will make sure. He will provide for you. And and I, I, I struggled, man. I, I grew up in a really tough life. And what I mean by that is, is like I had to go without for a lot. And so now that I see people that go without, if they have a heart, they're coming along with us. Because that's the true purpose. I see it. People that are knocked down, they just need that second chance. And that's what this business is about. It's a second chance business to give people hope, faith, and and love. You know, people, people, I I, I have a a buddy of ours now that is in the TCS and he always says love. It's Jesse Miller. And, And when he spoke at the TCS retreat, I was just like, man, that was me six years ago. Mm. That was me. It was a guy in the room that just wanted to love on people and just do things because he had no other way to go. It was just do this or be the person you used to be. And so that's what's important is just being where your feet are, loving on people, being that servant leader and making sure that you're going through the process and making sure that everybody is coming with you and we are not going to leave anybody behind if they want to be a part of this. Man, this was good. This was good. Man, Nate, you got anything to wrap this up, man? I have nothing to add. We're going to have to have him on any have him on again though for sure yeah part two (laughs) part two everybody listening coming soon man because uh yeah we can roll this for like three hours today but uh we all gotta get back to work so uh ryan man this that right there mic drop moment uh i'm gonna wrap this up man we we really appreciate you today this is this was a heck of an episode well i appreciate it man and like i said this is just my life and i like to share the journey with everybody and you know, it's a, it's, it's a, it's a really, really, really good journey, man. And I, I, I truly believe that like, if you're on this journey and, and there's a lot of people on this journey with me, I mean, my, you know, my, my best thing that I like to do is, is just really just see people for who they are and just really pour into them because those people, man, they have so much, they have so much and, and they have so much to give. You just got to be the light in the room. You know, who loses if you don't win? Mm. Love it. Every single person in my company, their families, their kids. That is why I do what I do. I make sure that I'm bringing leaders and I'm creating other leaders in my company. And when, when that happens, watch out. Because BSI is going to be not the biggest, but it will be the best company in the world. 
Love that, man. No doubt. No, if you guys are listening to this, you got to share this with your friends and family because this was awesome today. Uh, so much, so much information too. I know I'm gonna definitely listen to this one a few times actually too. But uh, nah, man, we we can't say enough how much we appreciate you uh, and you taking the time, man, to do this today because I knew it was gonna be good. Uh, this this was real good. So. Um, uh, we can't say that enough, man, but we appreciate you and everybody listening out there. Please share this episode, like, comment, subscribe, because uh, this one was uh, definitely worth the share. And uh, yeah, with that being said, Nate, you got anything? That's it, brother. Appreciate you, Ryan. Yeah. And if you guys, if you guys are interested in following, uh, I'm on, uh, on LinkedIn, I'm on uh, Instagram, I'm on Facebook, just as Ryan Austin on Facebook. And then, uh, the real Ryan Austin on Instagram and LinkedIn, Ryan Austin. Uh, and I'm from Michigan. So I'd love to have you follow me, uh, reach out to me if you ever have anything, but man, I just, like I said, man, I'm here to help and, you know, in any way. And I love, I love advice. I love when people tell me that, you know, something impacted their life and, you know, because what it does is, is, is I have a cup. Okay. And the cup, it, it, it pours out all the time. So when I get those little dabs of people saying, man, this is good, or this helped me, or this impacted me, that fills the cup and it overflows the cup. And when it overflows the cup, I can pour into more people, my company, my people, my kids, my wife, every single person around me. But when that cup dries, I got to fill my cup back up. So I appreciate you guys. I appreciate everything. And, you know, you guys have been a big part of my life too, man, especially with through TCS. And it's just a, it's just a great group, man. It's a, it's a very, very good group for guys that really want to go places. So guys or girls. For sure. Man. Awesome, brother. awesome guys. Thank you all for listening and we will see you guys on the next episode.